This video series is brought to you by the ASU Writing Center within the Academic Support Network. Thank you for joining me as we discuss part two of tips for presentations. This video, our second in the series, will discuss combining written and visual communication. Let's get started. When writing out a presentation, or notes for a presentation. You will need to consider the style of your communication. Spoken and written language are not the same because they exist in different situations. Presentations are immediate. The audience can't interact with a presentation the way they would with a written text. Therefore, when you craft a presentation, you have to consider the style of spoken language. We've included some tips for effective spoken language on the right. Define technical terms or complicated concepts in a concise manner. Alert your audience to changes in subject matter by incorporating previews, transitions, and recaps. Try to write your speech in conversational language. Write your speech as you would talk to a friend. Try to simplify sentence structure. Aim for clarity over complexity. Try to make each sentence flow logically from its predecessor. And read text aloud as you complete each section. Make sure that you are comfortable saying the text as well as reading it. Keeping these things in mind will help you to make sure your notes or script for your presentation are clear and comprehensible for your audience. When you do prepare notes for your presentation, be sure to match the style of your presentation. Have you been asked to be formal? Then include formal language in your notes. For extemporaneous presentations or presentations where what you say aloud is not memorized, it can be good to write outlines in your notes over full paragraphs. This can prevent you from simply reading a script or sounding too memorized. Consider the logistics of where your presentation notes will be when you present. Do you have them on the computer? How will you see them? Are they on note cards or paper? How will you keep that from being distracting? Finally. Keep in mind that notes don't have to only include spoken communication. It can include cues or notes for what you want to communicate visually as well. When adding in visual communication to your presentation, you'll want to consider the purpose of visual aids. Visual aids enhance the message being presented, but they should not be the presentation itself. They keep the speaker on track and highlight key points for the audience and they engage the audience and are memorable. For this presentation, we will focus mainly on creating effective slides, although many of these suggestions can be easily applied to the creation of other visual aids. When building out the content for your slides, you want to build slides that enhance your content rather than control it. You'll want to keep your slides to one topic per slide. You'll want to be sure your slides are readable and the font you choose is not too small. Also, consider how slides may appear overly wordy. It is good to follow the six by six rule, keeping a slide to six lines of text with six words each. As a note, you'll see in this presentation that our slides are very word heavy. That is because these slides serve as a resource or handout because they are shared in the PDF form over the internet. With a majority of your presentations, that won't be the case. So your slides will be less wordy. Along those lines, you'll want to make sure your slides don't contain the entirety of your presentation. When considering the design for your presentation slides, you'll want to keep in mind a few basic rules, even if you use templates for your design. Be cautious when using slide transitions and effects. They can be helpful for showcasing certain pieces of your slides 
but can easily become distracting. Use animations sparingly, but mostly to control the dissemination of information. This is particularly helpful for slides that have more words on them. It allows the audience to focus on one aspect at a time. Use high contrast colors so things can be seen easily. You can even consider using color palettes that are friendly for those who may be vision impaired. Ensure any graphics or images are related to your content and not distracting for your audience. Finally, follow any branding guidelines for your organization if you'll be presenting on their behalf. If you have questions about anything we covered in this video, our online study hub is a great place to post questions and get a tutor or peer response. If you would like to continue learning about best practices when designing slides for your presentation, see this resource that covers the do's and don'ts of slide design, which can be found at the bottom link. Thank you for joining us to discuss combining written and visual communication, and we hope to see you in our next segment, Tips for Practicing. Thank you.